Hello and welcome to Relationships, the Good, the Bad, the Ugly podcast. Live relationship advice. Coming to you straight out of Texas, I'm your host Shane Moore. And I'll be here for the next three hours taking your questions and comments by chat. Tonight's topic is the danger of the malignant narcissist, part two. There are violent tendencies, deception, cruelty, and no limit to what they're capable of. Find out if your relationship with a malignant narcissist. Find out if you're in a relationship with a malignant narcissist and how to leave the relationship and escape the abuse. We'll take a short break and allow those who want to participate in the live chat to join in. Don't turn the dial. See you in three minutes. If you can look into my eyes, you see what I am hypnotized. Oh, you get wrong with this iron high from all the things your dirty mind won't you wanna see what's deep inside? I'm taking for a mighty ride. Oh, you get some from all fire and blind from all the things your dirty mind wants.
Okay, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> I apologize for this. Um, still getting all this new equipment um, set up and um, to the right controls, but we will get it set and um, just a temporary setback. Thank you for your patience. Um, okay, we'll take care of this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mona is my right-hand woman. I don't know what I'd do without her. Um, anyway, we'll be talking about the, um, the, um, um, the malignant narcissist uh, that uh, is very much, um, very much, uh, some say, and it was said last night, that, um, that um, those that, had, that have been with a malignant narcissist, uh, they compared them to uh, the devil or a demon, um, and the question is, are narcissists really the devil incarnate? Well, of course, they're, they're not actually the devil incarnate. But um, I'm not getting religious. Uh, matter of fact, I hate religion. I love spirituality, but I hate religion. Uh, I'm not talking about religion at all. I'm talking about an observation about the similarities in their behaviors. Uh, I may use a couple of biblical quotes to back up my theory, but um, I'm not making any comment about religion or beliefs or lack of. So uh, please just bear with me on that. Uh, I'm not preaching or anything. Um, truth need not scream. Truth speaks for itself, and um, I'll leave it to you to make up your own mind. But uh, whether or not you believe in God uh, or whoever your spiritual leader is, your belief system, you all have a knowledge of what the devil represents, whether you believe uh, in a literal devil or uh, a force or um, uh, power, uh, maybe collective consciousness, whatever, um, you, you know what the devil represents represents. Um, the terminology is used, the words used to describe evil people, atrocious acts, uh, horrific acts, and um, the odd bit of naughtiness in us all. Uh, so, and uh, we all know we have that. Um, anyway, but um, through through my experience, 26 years of dealing with um, those who are uh, who have been demonically afflicted, whether, like I said last night, whether or not it's a part of their own uh, mind, whether it's uh, uh, fragments of their own psyche, or uh, you know, even if it's you know the proverbial fallen angels. Uh, demons, um, it makes no difference because um, they all, it all boils down to distinguishing features uh, that are extremely negative, and um, through the years I have seen um, numerous similarities between uh, narcissist and the demons or devils or the devil himself. So um, consider that um, that the devil uh, is full of wrath, uh, full of anger, hatred. There's no love in him. Um, and the narcissist is incapable of loving anyone or anything besides themselves and um, and they're incapable of receiving love it just doesn't it just doesn't um, add up to them 
it's it's like uh, trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole. It just does not work. And um, they revel in other people's misery. Uh, it's said that you know the devils uh, and demons love to torment people, um, love to um, to feed off of their fear their anguish, and uh, then their destruction. Uh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Narcissist, because that's exactly what they do. Um, it's said that the devil can mimic others to lure us in. Uh, the narcissist love bombs and uh, gains your trust. Very charismatic. Uh, you know, you might as well could say sharp dressed man. I mean, in every aspect, not just clothes, but I mean, he's sharp in every way. And the and the woman too. Again, as I said last night, more men have the narcissistic personality disorder than women. But uh, when I say he, I'm talking about both male and female narcissist. So. Um, as I took a closer look into some of the, uh, shall we say, demonic features, um, they could easily be terms used to describe a narcissist. Um, the main, the main thing that um, demons and the devil in Scripture uses against people uh, is deception, lies. Narcissist lie all the time. They lie when the truth would be better. It's like that they they have they that they are repulsed by the truth. To where you and I, um, those of you listening, are probably truth seekers. Um, the narcissist does not does not um, appreciate truth. Um, Matter of fact, they don't, as they don't know, just like they don't know love, they can't experience love. They're incapable of it. They're incapable of accepting or experiencing truth when it doesn't suit them. Uh, me, personally, I would rather know the truth, even when it hurts, rather than to live a lie. And uh, But there's, there's many people, uh, narcissists and... Um, those who aren't narcissists that would rather live the lie. And um, I've had many people tell me that, and that's their choice. That's their free will. Um, but that's not how I want to live my life. Um, narcissists lie, and they lie a lot, nearly all the time. In fact, they do it so much that they struggle to recognize truth even when it hits them in the face. I mean, they lie so much that they believe their own lies. And um, some have have even uh, passed lie detector tests. That's why that the narcissist can stand in front of you, look you in the eye, and blatantly lie to you in such a way that if you want to call it gaslighting or whatever, it's a manipulation because they are experts. They have perfected the art of deceiving themselves to deceive you. Hey, Nazarene, how are you doing, sister? I'm so glad you're here. Um, the narcissist has has an an innate ability uh whether it's genetic whether it's uh like i said spiritual they they first must deceive themselves self deception once they do that it's very easy for them to deceive everyone else and uh, they wear the mask perfectly um, they, uh, you know, the movie, The Mask, <laughs> there should be a movie made 
the mask that's um, about narcissists. And I would love to do a documentary on um, on a movie like that. Um, just uh, it would be it would be a very crude movie because uh, I'm no filmmaker, but I would be willing to, and I may do this. Um, I may take a uh, you know digital recorder and go out and um, talk to um, talk to narcissists that um, that are shall we say uh, you know honest, uh, which uh, or they're so proud of their achievements, they're so proud of of what they've done and uh, their destruction that um, they. Um, some just you know, spill the beans. I mean, they have to me. Um, it's not that they're being honest. It's that uh, they can't they can't turn away the chance to be in the limelight. And of course, when I talk to them, I uh, I give them what they what they want. I feed them. Uh, like, wow, that is incredible. I mean, how did you? How could somebody do that? They love that, and then they just they keep talking and keep talking. And if uh, if and when I do it, I'll just leave the leave the recorder going, and then um, I will bring it back here and uh, play it for you firsthand, so you can hear from the horse's mouth uh, just how uh, deceptive, cruel and um, heartless these people are. And not only that, but dangerous. They are dangerous. Um, They are capable of murder. They have violent tendencies. Um, It's been said, never corner a coward. Well, narcissists are cowards. They hide behind the mask. And when that mask is taken off, or uh, or they're threatened, they they fear that that mask is going to be taken off. What you have is you have cornered a coward, and uh, everyone knows that when you corner a coward, they're going to hurt you out of fear. And that's the same way with a narcissist. They will do everything and anything to maintain their um, their cloak of deception, their cloak of secrecy. Um, they want to stay in the shadows. They do not want to come out into the light because then everyone would see what they are. Um, and um, number two... Um, it's been said, you know, that the devil tempts us into evil. Uh, well, being with a narcissist is a lot like an addiction. Now, I know that, uh, that some women, they like bad boys. Uh, well, okay. How about a bad boy, but a good man? Well, a narcissist is a bad boy, and a bad man. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even consider them human beings. Because human beings do not pray or use and destroy other human beings. Um, especially innocent human beings. The narcissist, that's their main target. Without conscience. A human being has a conscience. They have a heart. Compassion, empathy, love, uh, and the need for compassion, empathy, and love. The narcissist doesn't. So I don't know what they are exactly, but it's almost like they are an alien, uh, an evil alien life form. Uh, uh, You know, that's a far stretch, but I'm going to say it. I mean, they appear to be human, but their actions... Their psychology, their psyche is not human. Um, the narcissist tempts us into evil. Being with a narcissist is, uh, we know it's bad for us, 
but we can't give it up. It's like an addiction. Um, because they play the good guy and bad guy. You know, like good cop, bad cop. They are your tormentor, but they are also your comforter. And this is after they have, um, they have torn you away from your friends, your family, uh, even your job, your career. Uh, their goal is to isolate you. To isolate you and to imprison you. Um, to where uh, they... Are um, they are your only support, but also they're your tormentor, uh, and it it's called trauma bonds. You bond to them through trauma. It's a form of brainwashing, of mind control. Um, so you form a bond through the torture that they inflict upon you. Um, and sometimes the victim, which is exactly what the, what the person is with the narcissist, they don't leave. They stay, even with all the abuse, because the desire is too great. The trauma bonds have been set, and uh, um, the... It's just, um, it is, they orchestrate and they, they spin a web, booby traps if you want to say that, to where that, and case in point, I'll give you an, an example. There was a beautiful girl, you can ask Mona, this, this woman was, a uh, young woman was uh, 24, I believe, lived in London, she was an actress. And, um, beautiful girl, um, and, um, she had been in, uh, you know, commercials, she had been in a few, uh, movies, and, um, she was, uh, rubbing elbows with, um, actors, um, of course, you know, actors in the UK, uh, that were, that were pretty, you know, they were, they were well known, uh, politicians um, being invited to uh, very uh, elaborate, um, you know, parties and everything. And she sent me pictures, and um, she um, talked to me about her problems that that she was having with um, with um, with a with a guy that she had. Um, that she, that liked her, even loved her, and she just wasn't ready for him at that time because she was dating someone else. She was dating a jerk, okay? She was dating a narcissist. This was no ordinary narcissist. This was a, um, this was a very uh, cunning, very um, deceptive um, man who, um, believe it or not, was supposedly a pastor of a church. Uh, he, um, the church was portrayed as a Christian church, but it was anything but a Christian church. It was not good at all. And uh, she, she found out that um, over the course of two years that it was a front for a cult, and uh, she had um, she had um, been uh, there was a lot of ritualistic things going on, uh, and you know not to get into that so much, but the man was in a leadership role, which is a nightmare scenario for any narcissist to have that kind of power. And he um, he had uh, women, young women in his church, uh, and there were two two women that were carrying his children. Okay, go figure, you know. And 
like I said, this girl was very attractive. Um, she was a model. Um, so he had his sights set on her. And um, luckily, she was able to escape physically. But psychologically, this man had built within her um, the most intricate, elaborate um, way to keep her forever bound to him or bound, uh, imprisoned, if you want to say. Um, he, he used, um, he used love and he used the Bible to deceive her and the way I found this out was uh, she was looking for, you know, spiritual strength because there, there, was, there was a lot that went on. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to, you know, there was a lot of spiritual warfare that was going on and uh, she suffered a lot from it. Um, and it was because of this man and uh, he was inflicting a lot of uh, psychological, spiritual damage on her. Um to break her down so he could, he could better, you know, she, she would be a better victim. And, um, so I began to counsel her, uh, talk to her and everything. And she stopped me, um, about the third session we had. And she said, Shane, she said, uh, I'm not being rude. She said, but everything that you're saying is exactly what he said. She said, the terms you're using, she said, the, um, because she was wanting, you know, spiritual strength, I was, and she was a Christian, I was uh, using the Bible. Well, he used the Bible. And she said, uh, she said, how can I trust you? And then it dawned on me that this was the fail-safe way this is the uh, the trap that he had built that he had uh, designed that no one would ever help her because he used the very thing that would help her to torment her and um, I talked to her two more times uh, well, actually, it was three or four more times. And um, there were some things that happened. Um, a lot of activity, a lot of strange activity going on. And she said, how do I know that you're not the cause of this? I said, well, I can assure you I'm not. I said, I'm, I'm here to help you. I said, if I was, uh, you know, doing anything else, I said, I said I, I, you know, I said I wouldn't waste my time um, if I wasn't helping you. And I said you can. I've got references, you know. I've got people you can talk to. I said, you know, I've never um, hurt anyone, knowingly hurt anyone. And I said, um, I said that's just not my, you know, I go out of my way to help people. And um, well. Sad to say, but um, she blocked me on every every way to of contact, and I haven't heard from her since. So that's what I'm saying is she was in hell, you know, metaphorically speaking, she was in hell, and uh, she was very happy when we first started talking, and then we got into counseling. She was very very happy until. Um, she was triggered and what, what happened was, is the narcissist, you know, this narcissistic man had placed these certain triggers. Uh, like I said, this is mind control. This is brainwashing. This is deep. Uh, you know, you, you hear people talk about mind control and you say, oh, okay, well, you know, that's bull. No, it's not. It's really not. It's very subtle. Uh, it happens every day. 
and uh, it is very, very uh, powerful, and it is, uh, the way it's delivered is very methodical. Um, it's patiently delivered. Um, nothing to scare the person, nothing to scare them away. They're lulled into a sense of security and trust. And before they know it, they're in too deep and they pay the consequences. And she, she was one that, you know, she's paying the consequences. Um, so, um, and I told her, I said, I said, um, she, I said, uh, I'll call her Kirsty. I said, Kirsty, I said, this man has placed triggers within your mind. And she said, but you're saying the same thing that he did. You're using the same thing he used. And I said, but there's no other way I can help you. I mean, if, if I can't help someone by caring for them, by loving them, by uh, uh, guiding them, how can I help them? You know, that man, that man is going to hopefully face judgment, and his judgment's going to be severe because um, he used love. He used uh, the Bible, the Word of God, whatever you want to call it. He used spiritual authority to take advantage of and imprison this young woman um, who was contemplating suicide and um, because of it, and um, many other young women. And like I say, it was it was a it was a cult. It uh, they were into uh, you know whatever you want to call it, black magic or you know the dark arts, and all that is is basically that is manipulation at any cost. So uh, manipulation, deception, uh, smoke and mirrors, and they're experts at it. So he, um, I became, unknowingly, I became the bad man. And she probably looked at him as the good guy. So that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you get the bear, sometimes the bear gets you. But am I going to, you know, crawl up in a hole and cry because, um, I can't help everyone? I don't think so. I'm going to keep moving forward and helping those who I can. And yes, that did hurt. Uh, it uh, really bothered me, but um, I've come too far to stop now. So um, I'm pressing forward. Okay, another thing is uh, the devil's been referred to as a thief. Well, a narcissist robs you of everything. Love, joy, hope, happiness, health, wealth, your children, you name it. The narcissist will take it. They'll take things from you that they don't even want. They just take, them, they just take things from you to hurt you. And it's so bad with a malignant narcissist that uh, they'll even withhold food from their spouse, uh, withhold uh, medication, yes. Say someone has heart problems or something. They'll withhold a person's nitroglycerin. Uh, they'll withhold a person's blood pressure medicine. They'll withhold, uh, you know, they're, they they have no conscience. You have to understand that. And the malignant narcissist is a sadist. They take great delight and pleasure in hurting and seeing people in pain, knowing that 
they're the ones doing it. Um, so someone might say, well, what if they, you know, what if they, what if the person died? They have no conscience. To them, it's no big deal. So they died. Well, okay, you know. And that leads me to my next point. Uh, the devil has been, uh, is called a murderer. Jesus said uh, he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Sounds like a narcissist to me. Um, and it's a well-known fact that narcissists do physically kill people. But in addition to that, they also murder souls. Um, there have been many victims who have committed suicide to escape the hell that the narcissist has inflicted on them. Those who stay die a slow, painful death, often due to health problems brought on by tremendous stress, tremendous depression, uh, tremendous anguish. That's murder indeed. Um, the devil distorts the truth. We'll mix truth with lies. Um, gaslighting and projection were invented by narcissists. Why? To distort the truth. Um, they they do just blatantly lie. I mean, just you know, flat out, as we say in Texas, flat out lie. But there's other times when uh, when they want to, when they find it necessary to mix truth with the lies. Because it's uh, easier, easier, easily accepted, easier accepted by the victim. Uh, the devil himself would be proud, I'm sure. Uh, so you can you can see where there is a definite correlation between the narcissist. And the devil, whether you believe in a literal devil or not, you have to admit there's a lot of similarities there. Um, some people believe that the narcissist is, in their life, is an actual uh, agent of the devil or Satan or even an incarnation of the devil himself. And I don't blame them. Um uh, so, what I'm about to say is um, is when when you've tried everything that you can uh, conventional means to um, to leave the narcissist um, to leave the abusive relationship that you're in, and nothing works. Um, if you're spiritual then um, you need to, uh, you know, you need to take action uh, with spiritual warfare. I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, you know, something that not everyone um, accepts as true, but it doesn't change the fact that it is true. Um and if you're not spiritual, uh, perhaps you need to get spiritual. I mean, what else do you have to lose? How's, how's what you're doing working for you? Well, it's not. I can tell you now. If you're with a narcissist, especially a malignant narcissist, anything you're doing by conventional means is useless. It's not working for you. Um, and that's where so many people, uh, they just don't get it. They don't understand it. They don't understand why that things don't get better. Um, why that they're always the victim. They can never do anything right. They're always wrong. 
Uh, why do they cry themselves to sleep every night? Why do they wake up feeling worthless? Uh, why do they wonder if they're loved or they doubt they're loved? It's because you are being oppressed, you are being pushed down, you are being abused spiritually. And uh, the person that is beside you is your tormentor. Um, anyway, the truth is you have everything you need to push the narcissist, devil, demon, whatever you want to call them, out of your life. Uh, the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, how do we apply that to the narcissist in your relationship? Well, how about no contact? Resist them, and they will flee from you. Have no contact with them. No contact at all. Cut off every avenue that they have to you. Uh, if they do get a message through to you or they call you, do not respond. No matter how uh, vicious, how hurtful, derogatory their message is it is intended to elicit a negative response in you or any response in you and if you just say I don't want to talk you know what you just talked you just talked to them if you tell a narcissist I don't want to talk to you you just gave them what they wanted you talk to them um, and they know that so, uh, now, there, there are, there are uh, many people who have children with narcissists, okay? Um, and, you know, the child is still, you know, a minor, and so uh, they say, well, you know, he or she's going to be in my life until... My child reaches uh, the age of adulthood, you know. Well, not necessarily. You see, the narcissist doesn't even love, is incapable of loving their own children. So, uh, most of the time, they could care less if, um, if the wife leaves with the child or the children. Um, the only thing is, is sometimes they will use the child as a pawn. They will act like that they, um, they love the child. They care about the child. Um, but it's, um, depending on the legal system and the judge that, uh, you know, um, that you get in the trial or whatever, um, I would say the best advice that I could give anyone in that situation is to keep notes, detailed notes, um, of every episode where the narcissist um, abuses, maybe physically, sexually, psychologically, um, if if they're cruel to the child, um, keep notes, dates, times. Be as detailed as you can so that when that time comes, you can present that, can pres you can present all that documentation uh, to the judge. And um, because this is becoming more and more known, um, and, and it's a real problem. Uh, and there are, there are some judges, uh, no doubt, who are becoming aware of it. And they're seeing it in their own courtrooms uh, a lot. 
And um, so uh, I would say in probably the next 10 years, um, we're going to see a lot of, uh, of changes in, um, you know, different um, outcomes of, um, you know, parental rights. Because, let's face it, a child that's been abused by the narcissist, they certainly, they don't want to go and spend time with, you know, their narcissist mother or father. Uh, even a weekend, uh, much less a summer. Um, and the larger, uh, you know, the more important thing is, is the narcissist's parent, they don't, they, they don't want to, they don't want to spend time with that child. Um, not at all. So, like I said, it's just them using the child as a pawn. So, um, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, please, um, those of you that are listening that, aren't taking part in the chat, please take it from me, um, you know, just um, kick your shoes off and stay a while, join the chat, participate, uh, we would love to love to hear your uh, thoughts, your ideas, uh, personal experiences, and uh, if you're, if you're hurting, if you're being abused, uh, or you know someone that is, um, hey, uh, this is this is the place to um, to let it all out, um, and uh, I will help you any way I can. So, um, take a short break, and I will be back in three minutes. Just take it slow There's no need to rush things, no Let's figure out a way You know it's you and me Don't care what I say So please don't go away, don't leave Without you, boy, I cannot breathe Let's figure out a way You know it's you and me Don't care what I say
Okay, and I'm back. Uh, well, thank you, Mona. I'm glad you liked the song. Uh, that is uh, Am I Lost in Vain by Matthias Anderson. I'll, uh, I will post the, uh, post the songs and everything, and the uh, artist uh, are certainly good. I am um, very, very pleased with, uh, with the Epidemic uh, Song Library. Um, of course, it's a yearly, um, yearly fee, but it's well worth it. Um, 30,000 plus songs and sound effects and, um, and there's the licensing fees and, uh, but it's well worth it. So I'm glad you like that. What would the world be without music? <laughs> anyway, um, back to, um, back to the topic at hand, um, what, what are your views, um, Mona, um, Nazarene, on, um, on the, um, what I've talked about, um, are narcissists simply a reflection of the darkness we all have inside us, um, or do you think that that there there is a there is a negative spiritual um, you know, problem there, a negative spiritual power such as you know. Uh, the demonic, um, you know, and either way, I mean, just, you know, tell the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm not biased. I mean, I don't, I just want to know what you think. Um, and, um, because, um, either way, you're right. I mean, you know, you could be. Nazarene, you say they are our teachers, Okay, um, exactly, exactly what do you mean by that? Uh, they are our teachers, um, as in a negative way they teach, um, Um, well, that's true, and that's, that's a great way to look at it. We learn about ourselves from them. However, I would, um, I would much rather learn about myself, um, in different ways than abuse, but you are right, that is, that is one that's that's one of the facts of life is that that we we learn more in the valley than we ever do on the mountaintop. We learn more in the darkness than we do in the light. Uh, we learn more when we're down than when we're up. Um, but I just can't get away from the abuse. Um, I would say they are supposed to be our teachers, um, but um, Mona, you say they teach you what you don't want and what to look for. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's um, there's different. Um, things that I want to um, to uh, touch on as far as um, co-parenting with a narcissist uh, because I think that that's a that's a, a very important uh, topic because um, there's many uh, women 
some men, but mainly women, um, when they're divorcing a narcissist uh, and they have a child with a narcissist, they um, they view co-parenting with them um, as almost impossible. Um, psychology Today has a um, very um, informative article, Five Tips to Preserve Your Peace While Co-Parenting with a Narcissist. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with everything here, but I'm just going to read this and uh, then we can discuss it um, because nothing, um, nothing is impossible. Everything's possible. And um, I've had, you know, people that, that I've worked with, I've had women that I've worked with that they told me that, well, my husband will never sign the divorce papers or my husband will never sign the rights to the children over to me. Okay. Well, you know, I'm not being arrogant. I'm not, you know, I'm just telling you the truth. I tell them, well, wait and see. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. Because let's face it, anybody can tell you what's going to happen, you know, to take, take credit for something after it happens. I would rather tell you what's going to happen when, when I'm working with someone um, and, um, you know, and them, them hear it and then them see it happen. What they believed would, would never take place. And it has happened. The you know father, or if you can even call him that, um, that you know said he would never sign the rights of his children over. Well, ah, he did. Wow, amazing, right? Um, they'll never sign the divorce papers, but they did. Okay, well. That's not me. That's, uh, of course, I, I, you know, I had a little to do with it. But um, it is, it's, um, it's an ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Um, there's always a way. There's always a way. And those of you that believe that there that you have no hope, please contact me. I love, I love that. I love when people believe that there's no hope. Not because I love to see people who are hopeless. It's because I love to see their face when things turn around for them. And that smile, that's what makes what I do worthwhile. So anyway, um... Nazreen, you say, when I look at myself and how much I've changed, I know that it was a teaching experience. Absolutely. It was a learning experience. And you are stronger, and you're more aware, and you're not the same, Nazreen, as you were before this. What does that mean? That means that, that in the future that you will be able to, to um, that you will know what to look for, what to be on guard against, and uh, it will never happen to you again. You'll know the red flags. And when you see those red flags, turn around and walk away or run away. And if you don't, I will hunt you down and I will spank you. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Or am I? I'll hunt you down. I'll let Mona spank you. How's that? Um, yeah. When you see the red flags, run. Don't stick around. No, 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 no. 
don't stick around to 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 see if something's going to change or don't stick around so they can um they can twist things around and uh you know uh, and I know you won't she's an upgraded Nazarene absolutely upgrade she was awesome before look out world the upgraded Nazarene is here <laughs> Love you, Nazarene. Anyway, co-parenting with a narcissist. Marrying and divorcing a narcissist is rough, but co-parenting with a narcissist is almost impossible. The demands, attacks, threats, and attempts to inflict guilt are so skillful, they rattle a parent, sabotaging his or her mental health. However, awareness of the narcissist dysfunctional tactics protects the parent struggling in this situation. Once these relational matter patterns are identified, it is easier to co-parent with the narcissist. Now, truthfully, I'm leaning towards, you know, if at all possible, when the child does not want anything to do with the narcissist because they've been abused or they've been mistreated, uh, and you know the narcissist is not going to change because they're incapable of changing, um, What's better than co-parenting with a narcissist is completely cutting ties, if you can. I mean, get that child away from them forever. I mean, you know, it's not like the narcissist is going to be like, oh, you know, I lost my child, you know, to, to the mother, this and that. They don't care. Matter of fact, they'll, they'll, even, they'll even admit they don't care. It's like, you know, big deal, you know, who cares? You know, it's, um, you know, spilt milk. <laughs> um, hold on just one second. I will be back in 15 seconds. And I'm back. Okay. Um, so that would be that would be the best thing, is uh, because, like I said, they they admit, you know, I I just care about myself. I don't care about I don't care about my child. You know, which is true. You know, you have to give them credit. At least they're honest about it. Um. But, um, yeah, Mona, that's, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, WB means, but, uh, W, um, but, yes, absolutely. Yep. I've had people tell me, well, I ask them about, about our child or our children. They said, I only care about myself. Next, you know. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm not too keen on this um, on this shorthand, so welcome back. <laughs> okay, that was pretty. <laughs> oh, now I'm embarrassed. Anyway, uh, no, I'm really not. Okay. Number one: expect nastiness and ignore it. Okay, what have I said? Ignore it. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Do not, as, as much as you want to, as much as you are, as much as your mind wants to, of course you're going to hear it, but don't listen. And what I mean by that is you're going to hear it, you're going to hear the words, but don't, don't sit and study and analyze what they're trying to say or what they said. 
That's the worst thing you can do because sooner or later they're going to press the right buttons. They're going to get the best of you and you're, and they're going to draw you in. They're experts at drawing you back in. Don't play the game. Ignore it. Do not listen. Do not listen. Let it go in one ear and out the other. No matter what. Backhanded comments and character attacks are a narcissist's favorite pastimes. Expecting these attacks prepares a person. They become easier to ignore. Otherwise, when a narcissist blindsides you, it feels like an emotional slap in the face, which, which evokes a knee-jerk reaction. This is their goal. They want to elicit an emotional response so they can accuse you of being crazy and out of control. Sound familiar? Number two, be aware of triangulation. A narcissist loves to align one person or group of people with them and against another person. In other words, efforts to align the kids against you, hoping to put you in the position of bad guy, may be frequent. Deflect this attempt by following a few guidelines. Now, yes, Nazarene. Masters of empty threats and very familiar, yes. What I just read is uh, hoping to put you in the posi position of bad guy. They will tell the children, well, you're suffering because of what your mother did. Ignore it. They will say, um, they'll say, well, they'll, they'll, they'll even go so far as to say, well, I don't love you because of... Because of your mother. Or I don't love you because of your father. When the truth is, they don't love, they never love them. They don't love anybody. Deflect this attempt by following a few guidelines. Decide if the situation is safe or unsafe. For example, if the narcissist allows the kids to eat ice cream for breakfast, he is not risking their safety. Although this is not ideal, do your best to ignore it. However, if the situation is unsafe, for example, the narcissist allows the kids to ride in a car without seat belts, it's important to act. First, appropriate, appropriately educate your kids on safety. Empower and encourage them to be safe at all times, especially when you are not present. Next, document the date and time the incident occurred and save this information. What did I say? What did I just say? Documentation. Documentation is your best friend against a narcissist. And please don't write it down. Because if you write it down, you're going to have a paper trail. And the narcissist will go through everything you have. They don't have any respect for your privacy. Uh, you have to keep in mind, they believe they own you. You are their property. So therefore, they can go through anything you have. Get, get you an app on your phone or whatever, such as a locking diary that only you have the combination to, uh, or on your laptop or whatever. Use that. Uh, but, you know, don't, don't, don't leave any kind of paper trail because if... The malignant narcissist finds any kind of paper trail. Yes, emails, very good way of documenting it. Yes, uh, but if they have, if they know your password or they ever get your password, then, you know, you're pretty, you're screwed. Um, but um, um, if... If they ever find that you are, yes, send emails to yourself. Very good. Uh, if they find the paper trail or they find that you are, you know, they will take that that you're plotting against them uh, to uh, reveal them for what they are. That's when they're most apt to become violent or even worse, um, you know. So be very careful. 
with that. Um, next, calmly email your ex and politely ask him to be safe in the car with the kids. If he responds angrily and attempts to start a fight, ignore him. You have documented the incident, which is critical. I cannot emphasize that enough. Number three, do not succumb to threats or guilt. The narcissist wants to rattle your cage when you are enjoying your kids. Ignore his calls. Most likely, the narcissist refuses to return the grace or flexibility extended to him, so absolve yourself of guilt. Resurrect a healthy boundary and protect your time with the kids. And that's another thing, is uh, is I know that most of you listening, um, and even listening to the rebroadcast, whatever, you want you want peace and happiness for your ex, whether you know, even though they don't want the same for you. I'm just going to say, there comes a time when you have to get down in the trenches. You have to throw away, you have to do away with the Mr. or Mrs. Nice Guy or Nice Girl. Don't extend to them any kindness that they don't extend to you. Don't do it. Because the narcissist takes that as weakness. They take that as weakness. What you have to do is not fight fire with fire, but just like this says, you know, uh, ignore them. They want to upset you when you're enjoying your kids. They want to, they want to rattle your cage. They want to make you cry. They want to bring you down. They want to press you down. They want to hold you down. Their greatest fear is is that you will you will gain strength, you will find out you will find your own power, and they know when you do that you will rise above them. Uh, be aware of the narcissist's tendency to play favorites. Although it is upsetting to watch this unfold with your kids, confronting the narcissist is not productive. It's never productive. A narcissist has minimal ability to understand another person's perspective if it defers from theirs. Instead, encourage the kids to share their feelings. When they do, emphasize with their feelings. Um, This goes without saying a lot of you. Parent with empathy. Often a narcissist lacks empathy. You think? They have no empathy, which is what a child needs to thrive emotionally. They are able to sympathize because they become the powerful saver and rescuer, which strokes their ego. Yet pity strips children of their self-efficiency and teaches them to play the victim. That's what I was saying is with the spouse of the narcissist, um, the narcissist is, is your tormentor. He's also your comforter. He's your saver, but he's also your destroyer. Um and uh, they want to, they create uh, problems. They will, they will hurt you so they can save you. They will hurt you so they can rescue you. They will put you in danger so they can be your savior. Uh, yes, Nazarene, they find pleasure in destroying happy occasions and good times. Why is that? Because deep down they are miserable. And they enjoy it. They enjoy the power. For this reason, a parent without a narcissistic personality will need to compensate for the narcissist's lack of empathy by ensuring that they are remaining emotionally attuned to their child, honoring their feelings, and empowering and encouraging. And Nazarene, I know that you, thank God, that your daughter has you because if there was anybody that ever had um, the the heart of two people or three people or 50 people, it would be you, Nezreen. So 
Um, I thank God that you are her mother. Um, and um, absolutely. Remember, believe in yourself. Parent with empathy and stay calm. Narcissists will eventually trip over their own ego. And that is, that is what I take so much delight in. Is um, the narcissist has no idea that they have a rope around their neck. Um, and if they do, if they do realize that they have a rope around their neck, they have no idea how long the rope is. I enjoy seeing them run and um, not knowing that that the rope, you know, is tied to a tree or secured and eventually the rope runs out. What happens? Well, you do the math. They hang themselves. Self-destruction. And I cannot explain why that that happens, but um, it does. Uh, they they often um, they often um, you know find themselves old, alone, with no one, and they're wondering why, why me, why me. They still have that victim mentality that victim mentality i'm the victim when everyone has been their victim um when they have victimized everybody and that's just um that is <laughs> it's like well do the math you know uh wow you really so, but uh, yes, yes, they they cannot stand to to see the the other parent um, get any um, um, to you know see the um, children loving um, the um, one parent. Um, they just don't, uh, it's, it's too much. Um, and so there you go. I mean, that's just, you know, they don't want to share any glory. It's all theirs. But that's just that's that's their nature. Um, so, but um, there's um, there's all kinds of different um, labels and things. But um, I guess the best way to describe a narcissist is that um, the malignant narcissist is um, destroyer. They are destroyers, and um, they're um, they don't they don't destroy immediately. They like to take their time destroying. Now, some of you um, will um, you know I've you know talked about the the male narcissist, the male malignant narcissist. I want to talk about the female malignant narcissist. And this, believe it or not, well, some of you will believe it. Um, most of the time, this, this, this happens with um, a narcissistic mother. Now, you ask where a narcissistic man comes from. Most of the time, they have a narcissistic mother or narcissistic parents. Um, 
maybe maybe not both parents uh just one most often it's the mother um however i like to say this the narcissist the sociopath the psychopath they usually have one person they usually have one person that they that they care about just one and oftentimes with the mother it is the son with the father it's the daughter but they're the only ones so this this dynamic is that they give everything to this child that's you know the the man that's the narcissist um you know he's he's already there i mean he's already he already has the the characteristics the tendencies the traits and everything but with the mother she just strengthens it intensifies it same way with father um Narcissists have absolutely no idea they are narcissists, and by the time they go in for the kill, their work brains have already invented the entire an entire justification scenario for treating you the way they do and leaving you in the dust. That's what I'm saying. Everything is justified by them. Um, even murder. You know, you see people. You see people in the courtroom, you know, when they're uh, when when they're sentenced to prison, and they're like, "What? I, you know, I I I just stabbed them 108 times. I mean, they deserved it, you know. Um, you know, dinner was cold, or you know, dinner wasn't ready. Hey, it happens. It does happen. Um." And if they've done their job correctly, they've already convinced key members of your support network that you are the one to blame, so you can't turn to them. You're on your own with this. And you must understand that reasoning with a narcissist is useless. They are not even people capable of truly feeling empathy, so anything you do or say can and will be used against you. Um, so, when, when, when you are dealing with a you know spouse or person that you're in a relationship with who are showing who shows all these traits or most of these traits look into their family look into their um look at their mother look at their father uh look at how they were raised and uh most of the time um not 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 all the time, but most of the time there's one parent that um, that really dotes on them. That uh, you know, uh, no matter what they do, um, it's okay. You know, well that's just Johnny. You know, uh, that's just how he is. No, Johnny's a jerk. You know, Johnny's an ass. Okay, that's just it. I've um, I I was uh, you know dating this woman one time, a uh, girl one time, um, actually a few years ago, she was, um, I was uh, 40, 45, she was, um, she's like 27, okay, my mistake, <laughs> but um, this, this girl was, um, you know, she was, she was a narcissist, I mean, she was, um, uh, she only cared about herself. Um, she um, she would um, I um, would uh, you know buy and you know, sell things and um, um, buy things and restore them and um, then you know take them to you know sales and stuff, you know, and, or to, um, certain, you know, collectors, and, uh, well, there was a big, you know, deal in town, and, um, this girl just, you know, 
was, uh, you know, we were, were supposed to be there at, you know, 5 o'clock or, you know, get up at 5 o'clock, be there at like 6, 6 in the morning, be set up and everything. And um, it was raining and everything. She wouldn't get up, you know. And um, she she couldn't keep a job because she was always late. You know, or she would miss days, you know. Why? Because she didn't, she was sleepy. She wanted to sleep in. And, um, so, you know, I, uh, I just let her know exactly how I felt about that. And, um, so, on this, you know, day, you know, really what broke the camel's back was, um, I got up, and her mother um, was was you know part of this too, and wanted to you know had had some things that she was gonna uh, sell or whatever. So her mother came down. We met, and I said, "Well," she said, "Where's where, where's she at?" And I said, "Well, she won't get out of bed." She said, "Well, I'll just let her sleep." I said, "Do what?" I said, "You know, really." She says, yeah, you know, that's just the way she is. And I'm like, okay. And I thought, well, I'll go, but uh, but the money that that I make, well, every time she gets there, she's not getting the dime of it, you know. You play, you pay, you know. Uh, you sleep, you weep. And so um, got there about six, was, you know, set up, soaking wet, I mean, it's cold and everything, you know. and there's people coming, and there, you know, there's a lot of cash being exchanged, and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm taking the money, and, you know, doing business, and um, at like 3.30 p.m., she comes up, so how much money have we made? I said, we haven't made any money. I have. Her mother looks at me like, what? Or, you know, what's your problem? And I'm like, no. Yeah. Um, this was, you know, supposed to be a joint effort, not a solo effort, you know. And um, so she gets very, you know, she gets very angry at me. Because she knows I'm not going to give her a dime of the money because <laughs> I did all the work. And she just came in, uh, you know, at the, basically the end of the day. And um, so, so anyway, um, later on, her mother actually, <laughs> I kid you not, her mother actually sits me down. And she says, I need to tell you something. She says, um, talking about her daughter, she said, she is a, I'm sorry, she says, she is special. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at her like, lady, do you know how crazy you are? She says, she is special. She is, she says, the doctors said I was never supposed to have a baby. She says, don't you see, she is a miracle child. So after I refrained from vomiting, and um, I, I actually like I couldn't keep from laughing, and it really ticked this woman off, you know. And I said, "You're serious, right?" She says, "Yes." She said, "She is a miracle child. She's special." And I said, "Yes, but only to you." I said, do you see what you have created? I said, she can't keep a job. She, she's not responsible about anything because she knows that whatever she, she does, that you're going to have her back. Her daddy's going to have her back. And, I mean, these people were, you know, they were, they were like in their 70s. I mean, um, and um, I said, 
I said, um, what's going to happen when you're not here and when her, her dad's not here? I said, who's she going to turn to then? And she says, well, um, that's where you come in. I said, absolutely not. I didn't sign up for this. I said, I said I'm not a babysitter. I said, uh, she's, she's an adult woman. I said, and she she needs to um, she needs to take responsibility and and act like one. And she said, she's twenty seven years old. And I'm I'm like, what is the is twenty seven the new eight? You know, I mean, what's the problem? And um, she, um, I I said, the truth is, is I said you are deluded. I said, she is special to you, to you only. I said, she is no gift to the world. I said, matter of fact, I said, why do you think that, that, that every job she starts, you know, that she ends up getting fired? I said, if she was so special, they would, they would accept it. They would, you know, they would understand because she's so special. I said, truth is, she's not special. She's just like everybody else. And I said, you know, uh, so there you go. I said, how many successes has she had in life? Not many. I said, but, you know, who's to blame for that? And this woman put her head down and she said, I am. She says, and I'm glad you brought that up. She says, because, she says, I am, and I take full responsibility. She says, but... She says, I cannot stop from giving her what she wants. And I said, well, then you're going to lead to her destruction, if you haven't already. And I was just telling her the truth. And um, so um, it went on and on. And this, this girl thought that she, she told me, she said, I, I you know, told her about you know, some of her actions and everything. And she was so arrogant, so conceited. She said, oh, you'll never leave me because you're 45 and I'm 27. And, you know, uh, and I said, you don't know me. I said, I will, I, will, I, I, I will leave you. I said, when that line's crossed, I said, I will leave you. And I said, the only thing you'll see is my taillights and you will never see me again. And she says, it'll never happen. Well, it did. And, um, you know, yeah. And last time I heard, um, she wasn't doing so well. So, uh, but, you know, it's amazing how everything was my fault. <laughs> my fault. And, you know, that's, that's fine. Blame me if it helps you sleep better at night. Uh, I could care less. Because I know the truth. So, um, anyway, um, we've all had those experiences and, uh, they're not, they're not, they're not good. Um, you're right, Mona, lazy people, crazy. And that's just, you know, that's how it goes. So, um. Anyway, um, another thing is, um, is with this girl, she, she always had her hand out for what? For money, 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 money. She couldn't keep a job. So she wanted money, money, money. And, you know, I would, when, when she would work, uh, you know, and make money, she'd spend it just, you know, blow her money. And then she'd have her hand out, you know, for, for me, for, you know, you know, give me this, give me that. Well, do, excuse me? Um, yeah. Where's your money? Well, you know, I went through it. Oh, you went through it, huh? How about you blew it, you know? And uh, on, you know, worthless things, I mean, things you didn't even need. So how about no? Well, some people they're they're not used to hearing that that foreign term no. 
and um, she certainly wasn't. And um, so, um, do they get mad? Yes. Well, you know, they can get glad in the same pants they got mad in. I could care less. Or they can never get glad. I could care less, you know. Someone that, um, that narcissist, they are very irresponsible with money. It's, uh, you know, they will, they will spend money on things that they don't even want, things they don't even need. Uh, and they'll spend your money if you allow them to. Um, they, um, they, um, they're also unable to relax. They're always, there's always this inner power, this inner energy, and maybe it's not energy, but it's, uh, they're just not, they're just not at peace with themselves. So they're always, they're either workaholics, or they're always doing something. And um, this is, um, you know, I'm just going to say this, this is something that's uh, very true. Uh, narcissists are um, very, very sexual. Some are hypersexual. Now that's not to mean, that's, that's not to say that people, that everyone who um, is um, very sexual or even hypersexual is a narcissist. Not at all. But that is one of the characteristics of a narcissist. They are very sexual. And it is, um, since they have no conscience, uh, the way that you can tell the uh, narcissist, um, and there's even a term for that, the sexual narcissist, the sexual narcissist, uh, they um, they have no conscience, so they're going to have multiple partners. They're going to cheat on you. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And if you're with one, they're already doing it. Uh, they were doing it from the beginning, and they haven't stopped. Um, they, um, and it can, it's, it's like uh, sexual addiction. I mean, um, you know, several times a day, um, whether it be with, um, with you know, different people or, um, and this is the thing, is it, is it is rarely or it's not so much with their spouse, whether it be masturbation or, um, you know, they live in a fantasy world, uh, whether it be pornography, uh, phone sex, whatever. So um, most people that I talk to, um, you know, women suffer more from this than men. I mean, women have, you know, they, they experience it more because more men are narcissists. Um, they're like, um, my husband hasn't. You know, we haven't had sex in six months. Okay. He hasn't touched me in, you know, six months. He hasn't touched me in a year. Um, well, you know, <laughs> chances are um, he's touching somebody else. Um, and um, if, if he is... Um, if he's rarely home and you're um you're there and um and and he comes he wants to go out with the boys or you know boys not out you know every night or most nights and he comes in and uh sleeps and gets up and goes to work you're not living that's not a marriage that's not a relationship that's a prison sentence you're alone you're just married in word. You're not you're you're not actually married. That's that is not living a harmonious life. That is living in solitary confinement. And um uh you would be better off to cut all ties and 
be alone. And trust me, most of you will, uh, you know, you'll find someone else or someone else will find you. And remember this, it's, it's not about you. It's not so much about you finding love. It's about love finding you. And when it does, you'll know it. Don't, don't ask me how, but you will know it. Uh, those of you that are with a narcissist, you know when you first met them that there was something wrong. You felt something wrong. You knew that there was a problem. There were red flags, but you overlooked them. Why? Because you, deep down, you wanted that fairy tale story to come true. You wanted, you wanted what everyone wants. You wanted to be loved. So you overlooked certain things. You were scared to let go. And who could blame you? I don't blame you. I understand. But if you're free, and when you're free, of the hell of living with the narcissist, remember, remember the signs, remember the red flags, and never go through that again. Be back in just a few minutes, and we'll continue. I couldn't sleep last night My mind was somewhere else And I tried Not to wake you up from dreaming How do I tell you that it's all Because of us I'm awake because of what I'm feeling, feeling And that love's a fooling game I don't want you to be crying tears of pain Even though it feels like I'm close to you But still so far away I kiss you But not in the same way I cannot tell you how it happened When things started to change And I'm not sure of what I'm saying Cause every time I'm rushing into something I start to shake Something I am missing, missing But this love's a fooling game I don't want you to be crying Tears of pain Even though it feels like I'm close to you But still so far But not in the same way You saw what's coming in my eyes But I won't stop hoping You heard what's coming on my voice And I can't help shivering You took my hands and pinned your forehead against mine And waited for me You waited for me Love's a fooling game None of us want to be crying tears of pain Even though it feels like we're closer now And we'll get closer every day I'm trying But not in the same way
And I'm back. Thank you. Glad you liked that, Nazreen. Uh, like I said, these um, very, very good songs. Um, very good songs. Um, it's um, and 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 it's true. Um, uh, you know, for uh, you know, love is well, love with a narcissist is a fooling game. Um, and you will, you will always love the, um, what you, what you believed they were. It's not real, but you'll always love that. Um, but you won't love it in the same way. You won't love it in the same way, which is sad, uh, but true. Um, and, um, but that's. That's just life. I mean, um, and we have to get on with it. <laughs> um, the um, there's um, there's traits that um, that malignant narcissists look for in a victim, um, and one thing about narcissist malignant narcissist is they are emotional predators they um they look for they search for different uh traits different signs um for people that um they can use and abuse um and that will um that will take it that will you know put up with it Many of these traits are absolutely wonderful, um, and they're they're not a sign of weakness in the larger sense. Um, they're actually strengths, but to the narcissist, they are weakness because um, the narcissist view of the world is upside down. And um, number one, conscientiousness. Um, narcissists look for the ability for people with the ability to be conscientious, uh, thoughtful. Um, thoughtful individuals are concerned about the welfare of others, and they follow through on their obligations to others. The narcissist will um, will almost they will trick you. They'll seduce you into making obligations to them. And they know you're going to carry through with those. But they make promises to you. You make promises to them. You know, that's just a normal normal re relationship, right? The only thing is, with the narcissist, they expect you to uphold your promises. No matter what. They never keep their promises. When you need them the most, they're nowhere to be found. Why is that? Because they don't want to be found. They don't want to be there for you. You're not worth their time. Um, and it's because they make decisions based on their conscience, which they have no conscience. Um, but people that are victims... They they fail to see the light or the darkness rather, um, because they project their own sense of morals, their own um, value system onto the narcissist, and they assume that the narcissist will follow through. Also, how many of us have fallen into that trap? We believe that that the love we give will be returned to us. The promises we make uh, and that 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 we uphold, it'll be returned to us. But that's not the case with the narcissist. Um, they know that when the victims are thoughtful enough to worry about the needs of others, they can exploit that quality to serve 
themselves. Um, and exploitation is, <laughs> that's the definition of what a narcissist does. Um, they know that you will give them the benefit of the doubt, that you'll believe in granting them a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, endless chances. They also know that they are never going to change. Um, they are aware that their victims are, um, are a, um, enjoy or take great pride in taking care of people. Um, and it's, uh, this is, this is what they do. They, they look at that as a romantic, they make it into a romance, um, uh, into a romantic, um, parody, if you want to say. It's, a, it's, they're serious, but it's a serious game. And, uh, so that's, um, uh, that's just, uh, that's just how they work. Um, and um, it's very detrimental to a person's uh, mental health, to your mindset. It it takes takes big chunks from your from your mindset. Um, I guess you could say they disrupt your peace. You'll never have peace with the narcissist. Um, and um, Number two, they target people with uh, empathy. Um, they, that's, that's probably the, the main thing that they look for is um, the empathetic target. Um, and that cannot be underestimated. I mean, it is, they, they are drawn to a person that um, has an incredible amount of empathy. Um, and um, because with a person like that, they get a good steady source of narcissistic supply. And that's something that, that you need to be aware of, narcissistic supply, which means praise, attention, resources, um, affection, um, it's, um, it's just, um, they need that because they're so dead inside. Uh, you could almost call them emotional vampires and, um, they're never satisfied. They're, they're always hungry. Um, so, um, the emotional fuel that the person with empathy gives them, um, they thrive on. Um, and the way to, to overcome that, to end that, is to starve them of that supply. What happens is when they get hungry enough, um, they go on the hunt for another source of supply. Um, Nazarene, you're right. You say, yes, true. They look for flying monkeys all the time. They do. And, um, are they insane? No, they're not insane. They are, they are very, um, they're very much, um, they're very much, uh, you know, crazy. I mean, they're just, uh, it's just... Absolutely, um, well, 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 they're not crazy. Um, when, when you have no conscience, I guess the best way that you could describe it is um, evil, just evil. And what is evil? It is my will, me, 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 
I call it meism. Me first, no matter what the cost. Um, number three, they look for people who have integrity. People who um, who keep their word, who follow through with what they say. They say what they mean, and they mean what they say. Um, they, um, they feel no guilt about retaliating or betraying their relationship in any way. Um, so you are basically a sitting duck with that. Um, number four, they look for people who are resilient, people who have been abused and bounce back, uh, and because they know that that um, when you um, when when they abuse you and you bounce back, that it uh, actually strengthens your bond to them. Uh, resilient people, such as childhood abuse survivors, uh, make the best targets for the narcissist because um, you've been there, you've done that. Um, the narcissist views that as, well, they've already been abused, they've already been through that, um, so they're not going to be shocked when I abuse them. Um, and they know that, that you're not going to give up when they abuse you. Um, they, um, they know that you're going to ignore your instincts and that you're going to be willing to fight for the relationship, even though it's all a lie. Um, they may even measure their love by the amount of cruelty that you put up with, uh, and they will push the envelope deeper further, like I said, no limits. They look for people with a high degree. They look for people who are sentimental. People who are sentimental and love deeply appeals to the narcissist because they can use love bombing, excessive flattery and praise to groom a victim to appeal to that person's needs and desires with ease. They're chameleons. They become what you are looking for, what you need, what you want, what you desire. And it's all an act. It's all an act. Nothing more, nothing less. And um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's hard to, to accept, but um, it's the truth. I mean, tried and true. It's just um, not, not good at all. Uh, when someone, when, when you meet someone and they move so fast, and um, one thing is um, they say, oh, um, it's like we're soulmates. You're my twin flame. We're twins. Um, they're, that's a form of mind control because who, uh, you know, who isn't looking for a soulmate? Who isn't looking for a twin flame? Who isn't looking for the perfect mate? Um, as I've said in other podcasts, you know, good news, your perfect mate does not exist. If everything's perfect, then something's wrong. You have to understand that, that um, true love is, is not perfection. True love is loving someone and them loving you in spite of both of your flaws both of your imperfections. 
Um, and that's, um, that's just how it is. Why are most movies and um, fairy tales all about the, the perfect mate, the perfect, you know? It's because that's the only place where that happens is in the movies. It's fictional. It's not true. Um, it is a fairy tale. But keep in mind that that when the narcissist uh, becomes physical, it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Uh, whether it's it's a small incident or whether they you know knock your teeth out, uh, it's going to get worse. Uh, when 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 you're uh, when they push you, when they slap you, when they um, that is that is their license. That is their their it signals them that um, they can do something worse in the future, and um, that's uh, that's just how it's uh, it's a downward spiral, and it it becomes increasingly more and more powerful, uh, their, their urge, because uh, they, they know that it hurts you. And that's the sadistic side of the malignant narcissist. They, that's, that's where they gain their, their strength, their power, is by hurting you. So when you stay after... Um, the tremendous emotional cruelty, uh, then it moves to physical. Uh, no matter how small uh, the you know physical abuse is, it will become increasingly worse um, because they will always, always. Um, they can never torment you or hurt you enough. And people that stay, they're, they're the ones that, uh, that don't make it. They, they become the ultimate victim. And um, there, there have been cases of, um, which I view as the most evil of all, is the narcissists that, uh, that take the, uh, that um, take the emotional abuse and uh, they, they, they have actually, there's been cases where they have actually um, talked someone into committing suicide. Um, they have, they've literally um, and that's you know, something that they take great pride in is, uh, well, they were able to take this person's life by, uh, you know, manipulating them, wearing them down, making them feel that, uh, that they were hopeless. And uh, that's, that's the ultimate control. That's, that's, the, that's the grand prize is... Uh, Unfortunately, um, it's uh, we view that as you know horrific, which it is to them. It's a it's 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 the ultimate power to um, to cause you know someone so much turmoil, so much torment that uh, that. They can't go on. Um, so there's um, there is no there's no limit 
to uh, to what they'll do. So, are narcissists really the devil incarnate? Well, whatever your definition of the devil is, uh, I would say that that would be affirmative. That yes, uh, that would be. Um, if you want to talk about living in hell, um, yeah, that'd be it. Um, but thank God there's a way out. Um, never, ever lose hope. There's always hope. Once you lose hope, you've lost the battle. Uh, dig in. Fight. Uh, because contrary to what they would have you believe, there are people that love you. There are people that care about you. And you are not worthless. You're not worthless at all. Excuse me. So, um, don't, don't fall into the, to, to that trap. Whatever they say, I said, just don't believe them. Don't listen. Uh, okay, any questions, uh, any comments, any, um, anything that you'd like to add, Nazreen, Mona? Uh, because it's, um, what would, what would you say to to a young woman that's uh, that that may be going through this that may have just met somebody and um, she 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 sees the red flags she um, she's wondering if uh, if it can be true that her prince charming is actually um, the one who, um, is her tormentor, the one who, um, one that wants to destroy her, um, what would be your, your advice to her? Um, just, uh, you know, woman to woman. Um, my advice would be to run, <laughs> get out you'd be better off and um, most often it's um, it's it's the mindset that the woman has that um, she settles this is, is uh, you know nobody's gonna love me no uh, you know no, no one's gonna love me anyway so I might as well you know stick with this jerk, uh, or, well, I've been with him for two years, three years. If I leave him, then that's all in vain. Well, truth is, it's, it's all in vain anyway. So you're not losing anything. You'll actually be gaining the world when you leave. Uh, and most of the time, um, if you really look at it, you're alone anyway. That's, that's just how, it, you know, that's just how it is. I mean, how, how much do they really contribute? How much time do they spend with you? Um, Sometimes, most of the time, not, not much. Anyway. So. Um, and this is not just a problem with, um, with certain groups. I mean, it affects people of every uh, 
status, um, every ethnic group. I mean, it's, uh, it is not confined to just a certain group of people. Uh, and it goes on a lot more than, than you, than, you know, people think that it does. Um, it's just that many people, they don't talk about it. Um, they just keep to themselves. My advice is, is speak out, stand up for yourself and speak out. When you stand up and you stand out, you'll find that you've got a lot of people standing behind you. But you only see that when you stand up and stand out. That takes courage. And we've said that courage is um, being scared to death but doing it anyway. So um, these people are not all powerful. They're not, uh, they're not invincible, even though they seem to be. It's very, they're very intimidating, very frightening, but, um, but you, you can be free and you can live the life that you can live the life of victory, you can live the life of freedom and you can find and experience true love, um, and we've also determined and agreed that um, you must love yourself first. So that's a huge, a huge thing. It all starts with you. It doesn't start with, with trying to cure them or trying to stop them. It all starts with you loving yourself first. Because if you don't love yourself, if you don't uh, protect yourself, if you don't take care of yourself, then you're not going to be able to take care of anyone else. Um, but um, one thing, too, about the malignant narcissist is um, although they may not be serving time in jail, they're dangerous. Uh, they may not have broken any laws, um, or maybe they did. Truth is, is, um, uh, most of the time they just haven't been caught yet. Uh, you take someone with no conscience, yeah, you can, you do the math. They're, um, they're very cunning, very... Uh, skilled at uh, evading the radar, so to speak. But um, they, they're just bullies. They're adult bullies. And um, it's, um, you know, what is a bully? Well, it's a coward. It's a coward that preys on the weak. Uh, preys on on those that uh, choose to see the good in people. So keep that in mind. And uh, the best way to avoid these people to begin with is to love yourself, believe in yourself, be confident in yourself. Um, they don't want anything to do with people who are strong, people who, um, who set boundaries, people that set limits. Uh, they, 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 want, uh, they want people who believe they're worthless, who believe they're weak. They just add to it. They piggyback and uh, make things worse. So... With these people, you have to erect strong barriers. And when they cross a barrier, when they cross the line, no going back. You, 
You can't excuse it. The buck stops right there. No, um, no second chance. And that's the problem is too many people with the narcissist, they give them a second chance. And sometimes it's, it's very, very, they give them a second chance when they've done horrible things or they've said horrible things. They've made it known exactly how they feel. And it is, you know, they don't deserve a second chance. It's just a, that's just a license for them to, to do much, much worse. <clears throat> so, any input, any, anything you'd like to share, feel free to. I'm going to take a short break. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Anyway, um, well, I um, I want to thank Mona and Nazreen for taking part in the chat. I want to thank everyone for um, listening who may not have taken part in the chat. Um, and um, just... Um, 
just to let you know if if you are in a relationship um, where you suspect that your partner may be uh, a malignant narcissist or you're experiencing abuse of any kind and uh, you have nowhere to turn, please know that you can turn to me and um, contact me um, via email um, and uh, yeah, by the way um, what um, what is um, what is you know said uh, between between anyone that um, that needs help or needs to talk uh, it it is always confidential um, that it, that's a huge um, huge thing with me is it is um, it's always um, that's you know paramount um, so there's nothing to nothing to fear there um, but um, you can reach me at uh, smore s m o o r e dot good dot bad dot ugly dot podcast at gmail dot com um, and I will uh, I would be glad to talk to you uh, and give you an assessment of your of what you're going through and um, you know um, let you know what your options are and help you any way I can um, if if you uh, enjoy the show uh, and it's meaningful to you and it helps you uh, please hit that like button please follow me on Spreaker uh, I'd appreciate it and uh, good night from Texas love and light to you all love you all uh, see you next time Good night.